Hey guys, I'm Davey Wavy, creator of the gay erotic website, Himeros.tv, and today I am joined by sex and intimacy coach Finn Deerhart and intimacy coordinator Leo Rising Scott. And today we're talking about ass play for tops, so let's get started. Himeros Live is supported by Himeros.tv. April kicks off our cheaper than Netflix sale. Why Netflix and chill when you can Himeros and hump for a limited time? You can get six months of Himeros.tv for just $13.95 per month, which is a 44% discount. Just head on over to Himeros.tv forward slash hump, that's H-U-M-P, to snag your deeply discounted membership today and stimulate your sex life. You notice how many times the subliminal messaging there around stimulus checks, stimulate your sex life. Right. By spending your stimulus check at TV. Well, not all of it, a portion of it. It was the Hemeros and Hump for me. Yeah. That did you in? I was like, oh. Yeah. Hmm. It's clever. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I, it, it sounds it, like you're selling me a mop or something, though. You know, like those infomercials. Oh, okay. Yeah. This isn't criticism. I'm just like, okay. I'm open to suggestions. The the no, verdict you... is still out. Will this be a successful sale? I don't know. I thought it was clever. Himeros and Hump. We have good imagery. If you were to go to the Himeros.tv website, there's a good like, um, it's like the Netflix logo, but like covered in cum and it's mm. pretty funny. Yeah, there's, there is a giant cum shot yeah. on the website <laughs> there now. Is. Yeah. I was like, what happened while I was away? Good God. Oh. <laughs> They got we're, so nasty. Yeah, <laughs> we're in the gutter. Nasty. We went to the gutter and man, we all, <laughs> everything went to shit here. We got in trouble. We need you. <laughs> Girl, I'm not touching that. <laughs> <laughs> I I was like, I, I text Davey. I was like, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really, I really do have anxiety around the mm. video that we're releasing in, in I guess it's like three weeks, uh, the smoking gun, because... I'm like, I think it's a really, I I go, I feel about a hundred different ways about this video. One of which is I'm just super excited that we have a platform where we're able to release this kind of content because Mm -hmm. like, this is a video that has really, really, um, I mean, there's a trigger warning in it. Like there's really intense imagery. Uh, there's a knife in the video. There's a gun in the video that video could not be released on Twitter. It couldn't be released on Pornhub. None of the like streaming sites, um, because anything that contains like weaponry, um, like would not be allowed and it could really only exist on him TV. So I'm like really excited about that, but I'm also nervous because I know it's not going to land for everyone. Like some people are going to find it, the guns, the, the knife, like it's a metaphor, um, Finn, there's, we give a lot of context in the video, but like in the trailer, in the preview, none of that stuff. Will anyone see the the really intense imagery? You have to go to the website and watch the full video to have access to that. So the imagery can only be seen within the context of the full film. Mm. Um, but man, woo. I mean, but you're also, Finn, were you going to say something? I didn't want to. No, no, I'm just listening. Go for it. Oh, yeah. Finn, you look really cute today. He looks so Not cute. That you don't. Thank I you. don't know what it is, but like you, it's you're you're making me like do a couple of double takes at the Starbucks line. He looks like he to... looks like a boy. Thank like you, he's very boyish you. today. No, that no, <laughs> oh, he, no. He does well, I me. shaved that, and I got my, my hair yeah. cut. <laughs> so it's all it's the hair and the shave probably. And you haven't seen me in a while, so I look different. It's a little. Maybe maybe you mean boy band ish because okay. I I have dated people who look like a in there in a boy band mm-hmm. maybe that's what you mean Has but I was I was gonna say um mm, <laughs> um I I have noticed it's getting a little more art house <laughs> the videos are getting a little more art house um the people on the people on all streaming platforms are craving more art house. Uh, I'm coming from apprenticing art house themes. So as long as you know you didn't intentionally try to provoke people, because I know you have a tender heart and a tender subconscious. Davey. Davey. Oh. <laughs> you're, oh, you're, you're a king of you're king of confronting. You're very 
<laughs> in a loving so... way. I never do it without my heart. <laughs> yeah. No, you don't. You always, your heart's always there, but you're like, let's confront it. Um, but it, it, again, it's like we're, when you're dealing with sacral energy and an erotic film, you're dealing with the closest thing you can get to the root besides just like, you know, totally. going up there. Um, I don't, I haven't seen this piece, so maybe give me a preview. No preview. I have to see what you everyone see, else sees. I would it. love for you to see a preview of it. Yeah. 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 Um, but my, my, my third eye was saying, no, 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 this one's more art house, but I think the last thing that you weren't expecting um, probably is making you nervous because mm. you weren't expecting the last feedback. Totally. Right. Yeah. The last video, w- what you're alluding to yeah. is the, the video that for some people they were like, Oh, this looks like, like you're alluding to um, the Matthew Shepard murder. Cause we, we had someone tied to a fence post, totally not our intent. Um, it, but I was like, wow, if this video, which felt very safe to me, um, was like triggering for folks, this upcoming video, which feels very intense, like is going to, um, be really confronting for a lot of people to, to watch. And it's, it's important to have those, those, um, looped in viewer points Mm -hmm. because, um, I don't, the moment it was said, it was something that could not be unseen. Right. But that's to do the effect, the atrocious effect of that particular incident, right? Um, but I was like, "Whoa, I'll probably, I, I can't not not see it now." And who wants to be the person go? I don't see that. Like, you don't want to be that guy. But it was also, well, I, I was like, "Yeah, it was a barn shot where it, I could, I could, I could see where somebody of who lives that life, or somebody who was really affected by that story, or anyone who's ever done the Laramie Project would see that and be." wow Mm -hmm. but um the act in and of itself was done because of people taking the crucifixion of jesus and it's everywhere you know what i mean so for some people that that imagery is always in their head and so in in the art house vein it's kind of like that's what you saw. I, Thank you. Even after they said that, though, I didn't see it because I think of my whole, my life in the South. Like, I yeah. saw my granny's farm. I saw my own fantasy life. I saw, like, the nature around them. And even hearing that, I was like, oh, I can see how they hear that. And it's not just an anesthetized, yeah. you know, piece of me. I've been an assault survivor myself. So I just like, oh, okay, like, I hear that someone saw that, but I wouldn't have pick that out, you know, if I were looking for a potential, I mean, I like work with other educators that like tie people to things <laughs> like fences and yeah. gates and doors and beat them, you know, like at Folsom street. So I guess maybe this like the environment that I'm in. Finn, can I ask, how do you feel about smoking gun? Like, are you excited, nervous? Like what's your, I mean, Oh, I love that you asked me that question. I'm not nervous about the content. I mean, I feel like, my concern is that like, you know, maybe, um, you know, it has backlash on you or some sort of like effect on like the intention of the company for mm-hmm. me and the intention of the writing, like I am an assault survivor. It's not about gratuitous violence. It's not about glorifying it. It's about like trying to get people's attention about the violence of our thoughts and the way our thoughts shape our behaviors and how we mm-hmm. do that to each other. And specifically in this scene, like the guy who is like really like worshiping the guy with the gun, he's like really into it. And I don't find that, I mean, it's a very exaggerated metaphor, but it's not all that unlike in my mind, like the way that we laud certain men for their toxic masculinity. And I say we as a collective, and that's the whole point. So it's imagery, but it's about like, you know, violence being elevated in our culture uh, and in the gay mind. And so people are like, oh, I'm against violence. But then they go to the club and they prioritize the guy who wears the the mask of the of the patriarchy. So that's the point um, in my in my yeah. work. Um, so I'll stand behind that piece. Mm-hmm. And being a, an assault survivor myself, it's not like, like I said, I'm, it, it's not like I'm insensitive about it. Like I've been in a car with people telling me they're going to murder me and chasing me for like three hours. So um, yeah, that's, does that... And I'm happy to share about that too, if necessary. Yeah. But yeah, they tried to kill me. They went to prison yeah, me- for assault with a deadly weapon. 
maybe when we release that video on that podcast, it might be a good time to kind of like hear some of your backstory too, or, or around that, like some of the context for it. There's also, there's also a layer in the, the video, the guys are in camouflage mm-hmm. and which was not intended on our right. part. But yeah. We were there. Yeah. there. It was written that they were in camouflage, but that, that it was supposed to be a military scene. Mm-hmm. Um, but it has this, like, it has, um, there is this element that feels a little problematic to me. Like that didn't need to be the case. They didn't need to be in the military. One of the guys that is mm-hmm. holding uh, a weapon is of like Middle Eastern descent. The bottom in the scene is white and it kind of has this like a little bit like we're trying to make some sort of commentary around like terrorism or like an ISIS video. Like there's a um, like there's an uncomfortable layer there that probably didn't need to happen. Um, so I don't know. There's like there's a couple things that feel a little tricky about that video. Um, granted, the guys that were in it, like everyone that was in it was really excited about what it was that they were doing. And like, um, it's just the roles that they took. Yeah. 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 I'll I'll send it to you, Leo rising. You can take a look at it. It's, it's, Oh my God. I feel like that. Isn't that like, that's, it's like, you were giving me like a PR meltdown (laughs) at the moment. I'm like, Oh my God. You know, like some people feel like some of the religious things that we've written are deeply offensive. You know, some people feel, Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, there's always some sort of like kind of balancing act to consider like interpretation but pulling from the same like domain of symbols that we're all using and and again my point about this is like body hate the way we cut ourselves up emotionally the way we go oh he's so hot i mean i'm nothing he's more that kind of like it's a script in the gay community that's so accepted it's like invisible you know so that's the point and i'm happy Mm -hmm. to you know really stand behind that piece and we did not cast them so again it's like oh man if we were on site we might have been like yeah you know, but that's like an incidental thing that happened versus like intention. Oh, was this shot? Um, this was shot in a project in in Europe where I wasn't yeah. able to go. I was supposed to go. I wasn't able to go because of the travel restrictions. Got it. Yeah. Um, well, here's a question that I actually so have a genuine question. Models. Yes. I want to know what. Uh, kind of curious what Leo Rising would say about this because the guy who is the 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 one that's um, got the knife and the gun, Middle Eastern descent. He is so into that role throughout all of his films. Um, he like, how would you on site like work with like him being like, no, I want to be this role. I want to be this role. If you're concerned about how that might be interpreted, would you say, no, you can't do this role because of your skin color? Is that how like you would handle well, it's that? It's not skin color. And uh, yeah. Well, no, we would have to, we'd have to, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's not skin color. Um, it would we we would definitely have to deconstruct it for him about um, implicit bias and caricatures that exist in mainstream world that informs everything. Like we talked about, like these are tropes that are informed. Um, we would assess potentially pairing him up with someone else closer to him to soothe it a little bit. Cause sometimes when you play on contrast like that, uh, especially on um, white, white male victimhood or, or just like white victimhood in um, the wrong palm. So I say in the wrong palm. So if someone wants to weaponize that and, and, and use that as a, as a trauma point or use that as leverage is like, it's not the greatest idea to subject any imagery to a bro- black or brown body inflicting, like flipping the roles, even though that can be a kink for someone, like people genuinely do have those power dynamic kinks where the optically the world is saying one thing, so in the bedroom another thing occurs, which is where you push the bow- boundary with erotic film and porn, right? It's We're showing things that the world says can't happen and they're happening. Um, but I think given, given some give it a moment to really look at it. I'm not, I'm not, I would have to assess the whole film because like as an artist, I'm thinking the last thing I want to do is put shame into other artists or the story an artist wants to tell. Like I never want to activate shame that a performer can't transmute or a story can't transmute. That's how I the feel only too. reason. It's, yeah. The only reason a shame is meant to come to surface is so that it can be transmute transmutative medicine for everybody. Mm-hmm. It's about being honest and and having the honest conversation. And so 
it's already cut. It's already done. So it's about looking at it and saying, what is the honest conversation that's going to happen? Like you guys are just getting better at it. You're Mm -hmm. getting more ahead of these things, Mm -hmm. but that it, it is a, it is not easy, but it is a deliberate position to take of saying, I'm going to get in front of, um, pain depictions that are subliminal as people are working out Mm -hmm. their own mental healing, mental to emotional to to like neuropath healing. And so as you're, when we're dealing with the eye to the brain and then um, cultural significance and cultural correlations, we have to take that extra beat and say, all right, the reason this is a big deal is because eventually it's going to make its way to an audience. It's going to ingest it. And everyone's not going to agree on everything. And it's not about me being agreeable as much as it's about the product um, mm-hmm. opening the fair communication and good. Okay. I get that. I'm going to yeah. keep going. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to keep going with fair communication because, um, we need to be able to, for, uh, people that are historically oppressed or historically attacked to feel as though they can enter the same erotic fantasy and not, and not feel manipulated while watching it. And then not feel as though if I call this out, I'm, I'm now attacking a safe place. Mm-hmm. Um, that arousal is the, I mean, it was also an arousal that needs to occur. So I'm thinking about it like, uh, congruently in, in Tantra and in just process. Right. So it is fair if Finn and I were in a relationship and we have to confront each other at a point where it's completely uncomfortable and then we don't talk for two weeks, at least we confronted the thing instead of leaving it festering inside and lying to each other. Totally. And then shaping our interactions. <laughs> yeah. It's shaping it in the wrong way. So now it's like this occurred, the fair thing to do is to make sure that people understand there is an angle of art that occurred. It's not to excuse who did the casting. It's not to put it on, well, they live in Europe, especially if they live in Europe, because like they're really passive aggressive with the racism. They don't acknowledge it, period. Mm. So you can't even ask someone <laughs> over there. You can't even ask someone over there to see something that Americans see because Americans, our pin cells are up. We're up on it. It's, mm. it's, it's, it's fresh for us. Everyone in Europe has kind of worked out a lot of how they're going to operate with it. And anyone talking now is adapting an American um, experience to correct something that wasn't corrected. So, but that, and, and that's an opinion, obviously. I'm not European. I don't have any <laughs> dual citizenship. I am single and can be married for dual citizenship. But, <laughs> I, but you know what yeah. I mean? I just, I just, it's a lot to unpack. It, I am a I'm a little concerned, but I also know that like Quantico did the same thing with their Arabic character in season two. They had him fall in love with the blonde, skinny white lady, and then they made her character deal with the stress of believing he may be a terrorist. Okay, in front of people, no, not many people called it out because it was still Obama era. But it was like it made me uncomfortable. I was like, you really thought that was a story arc? When, White girl falls in love with an Arabic guy. When, <laughs> like, when Finn, when Finn like shares like the 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 thought process behind the video, the intention, the message. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get all that. And then for mm-hmm. me, like seeing the camouflage, seeing the like military presentation in it distracts from that. Like to me, it, it cloudies that message a little bit because I'm like, oh, like w- wait, what's the what's the message here? Like what's going on here? So I think if I was there on set, I would have said. Um, and like, if these were the models that really were the right people to do this video, I would have said, well, let's at least lose the military totally. flavor. And yeah, yeah. yeah and I get that. Superfluous like, in my mind. I wasn't even really yeah. hung up on the military piece. It was like, well, I mean, you were probably thinking, why do they have guns and knives? Like, it makes sense if they're. I mean, honestly, the military thing makes it almost makes the the equipment, it almost plays more into the illusion because most people's greatest fear is that the average broad or black person is a thug that's going to harm them. Well, then they're, so yeah, if they were in, yeah, yeah, if they were in street clothes, that would also be, that, that would have set me off, right? <laughs> like if one looked, if one looked more like a thug and the other looked preppy, I would have been upset. They're like having the Pope's the, gown. And <laughs> Leo rising, by the way, is your, is your logo facing you on your microphone? Yes. It says blue. Oh, good. I think your room is, it sounds your voice sounds very um, epic. It sounds echoey, but I think it's probably just the room that I you're know. in. I'm wondering if it's really loud. Yeah, because like um, that's a whole other conversation. I moved furniture out because I didn't like it, and so now the acoustics are amazing. It has a, like a reson- <laughs> resonance to it or something. Like yeah, that. <laughs> like, it adds yeah. an extra. Layer. I'm always concerned I'm too loud anyway, oh, so that's so. just triggering. Um, that's right. That's right. We, by the way, welcome back. We missed you. 
I missed you too. Yeah. Our friend who writes in um, from, well, our friend who wrote in from Nigeria who said that she gets anxiety whenever you're not on the show. She had a tough month. I think she had a tough month. I actually, oh, I can't wait for her to answer, to like, listen to this one. I I got a lot of really wonderful DMs that I did not reply to because I was like, I needed to compartmentalize my brain. Yeah. And so I was apprenticing and then I ended up becoming a very fast substitute teacher. And that was really wonderful because I think it's going to really, I think you're going to experience it really nicely when we're on set. Okay. And you were doing something around dreams, right? Yeah. (laughs) Is that as much as we're getting? Yeah. Yeah. Dream analysis and dream interpretation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we should tell people um, that that we're recording this week on Monday versus Thursday, which is our normal day, because you will be on set. We're going to be filming in North Carolina on going to raise a on picture. Thursday. So, um, yeah. Did you say like spinning on like a helicopter? Yeah. Is that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, love it. I don't know if we should sing songs on the podcast. I get nervous. I'm like, what if someone sues? Yeah, I don't think we're like at that level. We're probably okay. Oh, come on. I mean, we are that if level. you keep going this art house level, yeah, yeah, I agree with Finn. You keep going this art house level, you're going to need, yeah, you're going to. Wait till the Athens project. It's not subversive in the ways that some of these other projects have been, but it's actually very complex. It's not. It's a bit psychologically Wait. complex. What? I'm not laughing. I'm laughing because, like, you said, wait to the Athens project. I'm thinking, I told Davey a prediction, and Davey was like, not going to happen. And then he was like, oh, by the way, we're, we're doing this other thing in the fall. And I was like, I told you you were doing the other thing in the fall. Well, that there's there's two, two first little... First of all, it's in January. Secondly, it's not... Fine. It's not in Athens. It's in Greece. I know it's... Is, not Athens, Georgia. No, 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 no. Athens. Well, yes, no. It's Athens. No, Athens, Greece. Athens, Greece. But it's not in Athens, Greece. It's in a, another area of Greece. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's exciting though. Well, it's exciting. I think for many of the same reasons that I'm excited about North Carolina, which is that it feels like a particularly collaborative project. Mm. Like in North Carolina, um, I feel like everyone there's a lot of buy-in that's happening to the concepts. Like the director is helping shape it. The models are helping shape it. Like it's really, it's not just writing this stuff in a vacuum and then saying, okay, now perform it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's when, Art house. that's when you get the best stuff. Cause like if the director is excited about what he's creating, he's also editing it. Like to me, that's the most important ingredient is that there's like, that people are like excited to create whatever it is that we're, what we're creating. I'm stoked to hear about, yeah, I'm stoked to hear about North Carolina. I'm hoping that like I can be updated um, during the project some. Yeah. We'll, we'll FaceTime you. Totally. For, by the way though, for, for Greece, um, the, pro- the mythology project that we're doing there, um, mm. each video is on like a different like archetype, Greek God, goddess, and for the title slides, I'm gonna create original title art for each for each video. Mm. It's super cool. Make sure you honor the name of your um your company. Yeah. Where that shit will come right down. That's true. <laughs> what do you mean? Himeros, the yeah. Greek god of Himeros desire. Himeros is a god. Is an actual god. You have to honor Himeros. Oh shit. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think about that. So then we need to make a bonus, like a 13th video. A 13th video. I'm yeah. serious. Yeah, yeah, I mean, because yeah. of 12, yeah. I really narrow it down to like archetypes that I see in the mm-hmm. gay community, like as active parts of the um, identity. Yeah. So each. Um, oh. No, each what? Go ahead. Well, each one has its own like kind of like thing that they, so they bring like strength and like shadow. So I'm like really constructing mm-hmm. the character around what they offer. Cause they're all parts of the whole like person, you know? So um, like growth path for each one and also like their um, key strengths that they are represented in the culture. So it's super cool. Um, Aphrodite is just like in love with like every, I mean, we see these characters running around, like they're no one person is like one archetype, but they're like in the gay community a lot. So I'm thinking about like the, like, merger of um like aphrodite being like the you know just in love with the moment with like a lot of um like dionysus in the gay culture and extremes of emotion and extremes of uh, passion mm-hmm. and like thrill seeking but also like kind of a breakdown of social um norms around relationship and it's just yeah it's fun i like the idea of these being almost like playing cards and mm-hmm. and um 
for someone viewing it to say like, oh, I see Aphrodite, maybe myself, I see it in my partner. I see, oh, I see this archetype manifest in this person that I um, spend time with. And I think that's going to be like a fun way to kind of view view the project as the videos come out. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also just excited about the idea of traveling, even North Carolina. Like, okay, North Carolina, maybe not the most exciting destination in the world. That's super cool. North Carolina is awesome. We, we don't know yet. We, we it don't is. Quite. I love it. I love North Carolina. It's going to be pretty. I mean, it's going to be a pretty. Uh, I have divine that it's going to be all right, like more than all right. But it's also like very lovely people. These are very lovely people. Oh, everyone that we're working with is fantastic. Yeah. Like, it, it, like yeah. I'm also just like excited though about going to North Carolina. Like it, mm-hmm. normally in yeah. the before times I would fly around a lot and I wouldn't be particularly excited about going to an airport and not that <laughs> 500,000 people, you know, had to die so that we can be excited about uh, mm. traveling again. But, um, you know, that's not a fair trade off, but I am finding myself like excited about like going somewhere, getting on a plane, feeling nervous mm-hmm. about it. You're not taking it for granted. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. And the outfits. We have really great outfits. Um oh, the, the period pieces that just kept developing. Did Davey tell you he's basically having he his spirit was sending you like these little like past life regressions? And I was like, Davey, these are past life regressions you might need to talk to somebody about. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about, but do you think like the 1940s is great? And I was like, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking yeah. about, but tell me which one you like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, he's totally having past life regressions. These are great. I, well, I had to order uh, uniforms, like military uniforms from World War II. Oh, wow. And and my big dilemma was like, you can buy World War II uniforms, like real ones. But they look like they were fucking used in World War II, which was like, you know, 70 years ago. They don't look current if you're trying to film something set in 1944, for example. So um, I had to get World War II replica uniforms created in the sizing of the models that we're filming with. Um, Did they get a hair notice or should I let that go? I love that. Yeah, they didn't get a hair notice. We, yeah, no, we can o- don't let it go. Keep pushing. <laughs> we, can only, we can only do so much. Uh, Jack, okay. Jack got a hair we notice. We can only do so much. So, uh, <laughs> one, Beyonce? Beyonce, yeah. Jack has really beautiful Beyonce hair. And so I, he, his hair is he's, he's thinking about cutting it. And I said, don't cut it till after the shoot, please. So he's, he's keeping his curls. Um, we can no. burn it in a fire. The little okay. shark is waking up behind me. I'm in... Oh, he went back to sleep. Okay. Oh, your puppy's waking up. Puppy. Isn't you so nailed it too, Leo Rising? When Dave was like, I don't know about that, but well, I like. Sen- I listened to this podcast called "This This Union Life." I fucking love this podcast. They're like kind of older union analysts and like kind of like a grandpa and a grandma and, a, and an aunt or something. Of like just sitting around like chatting about different you know things through a uh, union lens. Now, in reference to this Athens project, I was listening to this about inflation, how people take on an inflated part of themselves. And um, I sent it to Davey and he like sent me this message. I was all excited. And he like sent me this message back. that was like, girl, that was so fucking boring. I don't even, I don't even know what they're talking about. <laughs> oh, I oh like, yeah. I remember oh, that. that. Like podcast was like lit my whole week up. It just made me laugh. So we got into like a, a chat. Oh my God, said that to me. The Jungian life. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's, oh my God. Okay. It's okay. Yeah. It's only it's only because it like mildly confronts you, so you're like, I, I I I don't understand the language, I don't want to be near it. The moment it starts working for you, you're gonna be like trees. It's all about trees. To be fair though, they do use a lot of like, you know, union like uh, pre existing language. I mean it's really They're textbook communicators. But I I'll send yeah. it to you. I bet you might you might like it. Um, I just didn't expect that and it made me laugh. So I laughed literally out loud when I got that message from Did Davey. you have did you ever have like a professor like who was so uh like really informed and wise and like totally got all the material, but like not um so very intelligent, but like not intelligent enough to think about how they need to package whatever content it is that they're trying mm-hmm. to transmit to their audience in a way that's yeah, yeah. entertaining. Ooh, chill. So <laughs> like uh-huh. that's what that was like for me i was like oh i sat through this class uh-huh. and and it was fucking painful so but i mean i like literally like i listen to it every i get so excited when i get my notification like they have a new one out i like yeah 
it's dense and it's academic and it's dry. I need a little bit more cock, pussy. I like. I need some words thrown in there. <laughs> you really gave a gift to like me and many other people. I've never thought to consider that the academic lacked intelligence momentarily mm-hmm. because they couldn't figure out how to communicate to me. Mm-hmm. Totally. Instead, I would just be like, I'm going to drop this class. Yeah. <laughs> right. I would, it'd be like day two and I'd be like, mm-mm. Totally. I would just go to the bird and mm-hmm. drop it. <laughs> You know what you just yeah. raised, though? I love that the communicator itself <laughs> is the one responsible for the message transmission. Mm-hmm. Kind of in reference to what we're talking about, about like the art in the films versus like the potential interpretation. Yeah. If, you're, yeah, yeah. if your audience isn't getting the message, the problem isn't with your audience. It's with you and the Correct. message. So Correct. I never thought there was anything wrong with you, JV. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot wrong with me. You can always teach your audience um, by listening to your audience, by letting them teach you. And it's not it's not about um, molding into the code switching territory, as we come as we come to know it. It's about letting people in and fi- figuring out where's the transparency piece. So not meeting people on surface levels, like meeting them actually at the core immediately. Mm. And then what happens is if the vocabulary, if the material is dense, um, it's now flavored differently, and so people don't mind taking that density in themselves and then transmuting it to level out. But most people don't consider that. So you really nailed that. And so maybe that's your, we just work that out with you right now. You work that out in yourself. So, and you know, all the people that are like, you guys talk too much before we get into the video. This Who is this, says this, that? People Who do say that. that. And oh, I, well, because, because uh, we're not doing that. We're not just jumping in. This is, to me, this is the best part of our conversation is this like preamble that happens beforehand. So you know, we tried it for a couple months of just getting right into the video, but this is the juice that you otherwise miss. And if you want us to talk about the video, fast forward. Well, I like you today. You are snappy. I do too. And I mean, there's like, you know, isn't it a fine line between like, you know, doing everything by what the, what they're saying back versus like yeah. what makes you happy, like show up, you know, like it's like, yeah. this is what I'm doing. And if you like that, great. Yeah. If you don't, there's other podcasts. I mean, there's a kind of like, you know, it doesn't yeah. mean there's a balance in it. This feels like a production meeting for me. Like, then that's what's, what's, what's fun is like, you feel like you're for, I think for the audience, like, oh, you're behind the scenes of like how we talk about the work that we do. Like, this is, this is fun. You you really said like, I tried your little way for a few months and I hate it. So <laughs> stop, stop writing me. Yeah. <laughs> I honestly, I felt really like bored sometimes when we we're like talking and just like only about the video forever i'm like well they're gonna watch it anyway if i was listening to the podcast if me personally if i had to listen to a podcast where i knew everything about the video before i started or even saw it or got you know i'd been like oh man like i don't know if i want to watch it or is a spoiler yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right well and also today's a good day because i mean this video is tutorial based anyway so yeah yeah, I do have some comments Anyways. though about it. Let, well, so let's let's chat about it. So this week's video so is titled "Ask Play for Tops," featuring Will Tantra and Matt. This was filmed during our tantric retreat in Easton Mountain. It was directed by Matthew Lynn. It's a workshop, so Will and Matt are kind of in the center of the room. There's a bunch of guys around them while doing the workshop. It's instructional. It's informative and instructional, and it demonstrates ask play for guys who primarily top. It's designed for tops, meaning like the ass play in the video um, assumes no anal experience. It's designed in a way that feels very comfortable. Uh, When I was watching this video, though, I was reminded uh, back when I used to do more like YouTube stuff, uh, there was this video that we never produced, but was kind of like on the table. Have you guys ever seen America's Next Top Model? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we were going to do America's Next Top Bottom. Mm -hmm. And... So I have a friend who's a YouTuber and her name is Miles J and she was going to play Tyra and we were going to do competitions where like, you know, so all the, all the bottoms were competing to be like the next top bottom. They would like, we would reward them with like burritos and then, and then, you know, Miles (laughs) playing Tyra would come out with like a white glove and be like a good bottom is always prepared and do like the white glove tests on their butts to see, (laughs) see who like, uh, why a burrito though a burrito just to add challenge to it right because yeah like a white uh, glove test after a salad like okay ooh, what kind of challenge yeah. is that but if you oh, can, i get you now okay, if you yeah, can well. pass the white glove <laughs> test after a, after a burrito you are america's next top bottom wow oh my god it would have been amazing seems like, yeah the top bottom is like indexed to, cl- to like are you saying cleanliness or um, well that would just be one of the one of yeah. the measures what's another challenge <laughs> <laughs> 
we never got that far, but that was <laughs> that was the one that stuck out. Anyway, we didn't film it. Um, That's not YouTube material. Well, there would be like that. a way to do it. There'd be a way to do it on YouTube to butt check. Well, we wouldn't show like we would just show the like. Yeah, you have the, the hand coming up with the glove. Oh my god, this sounds like <laughs> that. <laughs> it's so funny, but it's just also like it's the time of night. That's a two a.m. like drag room experience. <laughs> yeah. That's two a.m. Yeah, it's not happening. We should have shopped it around. It's not happening. Um, okay, you still can. Um, 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 no, I'm exhausted. All right, so what did you guys? What did you think? What did you think of this week's video? Who wants to start? I liked it. Oh, good. Okay. Finn, what did you think? I liked it. <laughs> All right, great. Anything else we want to discuss today? Well, let's get back to our conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did think it was shot really well. Mm-hmm. I, I th- There was like a room of people, but I didn't care. I was looking at the exercise and I was listening and learning. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was nice because I had this little confronting moment of like, I feel like I could watch this like sitting on a, like I I could just, I, if that came up the, the way that will teaches, I would have, I would have forgotten where I was listening because my body wasn't reacting. I was genuinely metabolizing and ingesting the information. Like there was no excitement to my system. I was just like, Oh, Oh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, this thumb thing, like massaging right there. I never, did anyone ever massage me there? Like I was just, firing off these thoughts of like oh this is helpful totally. were you, were you helpful were you gonna say that it felt like you could almost like watch it on an airplane much safer place um i yeah i would watch it on an airplane well you couldn't but like if you almost feels like you could you mean your website doesn't load on improv i don't even well, well, yeah, well no why? it's like still pornographic like there's still like a cum shot and like you can't you couldn't actually watch there's a cum shot yes <laughs> yeah at the end they like yeah Matt has like an orgasm and comes everywhere. It's yeah. Well, there was, you know, Oh yes. He has a hairy tummy. Mm -hmm. I saw that. He needed to drink water. He was dehydrated. Okay. Well, I'll send him a note. (laughs) (laughs) Or yeah. 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 Are you our celery, <laughs> like more celery and pineapple, like <laughs> something? Because it was very chunky when it landed. I was like, but I oh. think some people's like is more naturally a little more thick oh like God. that. Is it? Yeah, like I'm it, glad that's what his, you noticed because his, you know, like for instance, he was in front of people, so maybe he wasn't as aroused. You know, I don't yeah. know. Like, and then maybe there's less more aroused secretion. We're theorizing about the thickness of his semen. Well, but Finn's right. I technically, I didn't, I'm not, I don't mean to have shaming language on someone else's ejaculation. Uh, but I have to I, say when mine is less like, you know, spurty, I have the same judgments of me. I'm like, oh man. My <laughs> drink, I was like, oh, he needs more water. Yeah. <laughs> so it was a half teaspoon. I, I, um, I love, I love in the video when Will says, address the, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> he says, he says address the whole man like he's like even though it's butt play right mm-hmm. like address the entire person and not just the ass um address the whole the whole man well address the whole man not address the whole man get it like h-o-l-e comma man mm-hmm. address the whole man um and he says all right he says make his whole hungry He's like, we're not, we're not in a rush. I love that. So he kind of like takes this time to make Matt really want the butt play to really mm-hmm. kind of like seduce him in a way. And I, I die, like enjoy every time Will names one of his techniques that he shows. So it. he's like, and this one's called lapping the milk. <laughs> and he like sticks his tongue out. Yeah. And it's like, this one is hungry kittens. <laughs> this is the hungry kitten. It, it's so good. And they're also, he's so good at it that I'm like, oh yeah. I'm like, I'm going to forever remember lap, lapping the milk because it, it's the perfect name. Um, and that it is nearly 16 minutes into a 24 minute video before anything even enters Matt's butt. Mm-hmm. Like, like three fifths of the video, you know, this is ass play for tops. Three, three fifths of the video is external ass play. And in, in a world where people are just so like, you know, revved up to like get into the hole, like it's just such great pacing. And it's so like if your audience, you know, is people that are not accustomed to being fucked, to having things up their ass, like this is the way to do it. 
Um, and then in a personal note, I also love, well, we're obviously all Will Tantra fans. Mm -hmm. I love the confidence that he radiates like in everything that he does, especially well, everyone listening is getting older. None of us are getting younger. Um, Will is relatively young, mm -hmm. but he's older than me. And, and it's very empowering to watch a confident daddy, you know, as someone that's kind of like seeing their body change and, and like stepping into a new chapter of my life. He's still more flexible than all three of us. Oh, for sure. This is true. Yeah. This is true. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Honestly, I mean, I was joking around a lot, but this, like this video is one of my favorites and I've seen some of this, I think on his, um, his only fans or his just for fans thing. Um, and when I watched it a while back, it was because I was trying to learn some techniques and I, I love the practicality of what he offers. Um, yeah, it's like, and you said, you know, this is where tops, we just assume they don't know anything. I think we should just kind of assume that like nobody knows anything. <laughs> that's I mean, true watching, too. Nobody uh, knows. watching yeah. this was like, oh, wow, that's so, yeah, it's the things I might know in the head, but like in the body and practicing is different. I think we have to intentionally be like, I'm going to practice that new thing today, you know, to kind of make move the the boundary a little bit and um i loved how what he offered in this video is so accessible and could like one two three you could kind of pull it out at your next experience if it felt right and um kind of feel like you have it at your fingertips <laughs> i love what you just said about <laughs> about about it not be like okay yes it's it was filmed it was designed for tops but like anyone watching this i'm not yeah. a top i can watch this and be like oh wow that's great like i'm putting that in my tool chest i think that's what will will's very good at making things practical for mm -hmm. for folks that's why I, I, yeah. I felt like he said design for tops really so that they could understand that they're not only a top like the idea is to um, deconstruct that that rumor mm. and it's by no um no way no weight of identification should stop you from having a fully holistic orgasm where your whole body is reactive and your whole partner's connected to you that's how i because his opening speech was so great. And I was like, this is so convincing that if I was only a, the fact that men who identify as tops witnessed the um, ecstatic presence, as he said at the top of the video mm -hmm. um, from the bottom, it's like it really sets off the truth of like, yeah, people are unaware of their bodies. So you can identify as this thing, but really, you know, you're more than that thing because you'd like to be massaged totally. around your, around your, anal rim that was my favorite part the butt massage work i was like that yeah i really do love my butt massage actually like i hate when people use the elbow it's like I, in 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 indonesia and this was a white person who gave me the massage not in indonesia because some people do really weird shit but uh, they used their like whole hand and like actually massage my glutes because my abductors were so tight that they did the whole glute mm -hmm. and it was just like this like flash in between of like Oh my, this is amazing. God, Jesus. Everything you feel everything, but then the way my SI like blossomed, like I saw chakras. He so the way he framed it was he said something like, um, I often work with a lot of guys that identify as tops. And when they see the pleasure that um the bottom that they're with is experiencing, like they want to experience that too. Like he kind of framed it in a way that felt like um, he was making it accessible for, for people that, that weren't used to butt play. I made a, yeah. I made a non-exhaustive list of reasons why guys quote unquote, like only top. And, um, I would like to, to, to chat about some of these. Um, I think, and this isn't in any particular order, but, okay. um, number one would be like lack of knowledge as in like not having, uh, like the information about, anal play like that can feel like a big obstacle for example like how do i douche right like that can be i don't know how to douche that can be a uh an obstacle mm -hmm. or i don't know how to how do i touch myself and not hurt myself right like so that lack of knowledge becomes a big barrier mm -hmm. i think this video like specifically like addresses that let's like okay here's the here's the information that you need um the second reason I wrote was stigma that there's a lot of like bottom shaming. There's a like toxic hierarchy of tops and bottoms. Um, so some guys might not explore bottoming because there's too much shame around it or like bottoming is too gay and that's somehow a bad thing. Is that something that you guys like 
I mean, these are supposed to be discussion points. So is that something that resonates with your own experience or some of the stuff that you encounter? Yeah. Yeah. Fins making yeah. I mean, like, topping and bottoming is so interesting to me. Like I know that there are people for whom that like th- that's their role and that's what they really connect to and that's it. And that's fine. But I don't think that is the majority of people. And um, these are like actions, not like to me, they're not identities. So it's like one of the exercises I love to do um, with clients is like, okay, so you're in this, you know, maybe in their relationship and they're trying to work on, you know, opening up more. It's like, you can't penetrate, but you need to top and bottom in any other way that you possibly can without your cock being involved. Hmm. So like get flexible with like, how do I express an energy? Cause it's like, yeah. Like in answer to your question, I think a lot of men feel shame around it because the intense vulnerability that it brings the man who's getting fucked, which is more like, um, we don't want to let other guys know that we're letting them in emotionally. We're taught to like pretend as if they don't affect you or, you know, so it, it, it brings up a lot of stuff. Um, and there's clinical stuff published on this too. It's not just opinion, but there's places in the world that I've traveled to, which is like, if you're a top, then you're not considered gay. Totally. Yeah. I mean, people associate generally to like the quote unquote feminine role. That's what has been like handed people. It's what they still think of that in, in that way. So it influences them too, just the way based on thoughts. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like, I like to say go where the energy is, you know? So it's like, if someone's like, I'm only a top. And I mean, if they really put a lot of invest, a lot of energy in that identity, then I'm question like, what's all the energy around that for, you know, cause we can mm-hmm. enjoy the preference without the need to shame the other side of the spectrum or, you know, it just, I, don't know, I agree with you, Finn. I think uh, we're growing to a place where we're destroying the binary of those types of flesh engagements because the languaging behind you're more feminine. If you bottom isn't, that's not accurate. No, no. People aren't tabbing because then that's misogyny and it's toxic. It's totally. like the most toxic <laughs> end of misogyny. And it's like, Oh, it's like when I fuck my my muscle bottoms brains out, mm-hmm. it's because really I want to like blast my mom. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And like, do, is that what you want to really talk about in therapy? Because that's where someone's going to take it. If that's what you're saying, you know what I mean? That you feel like you need to fuck a feminine energy brutally. And that's misogyny, you know? And it's like, that's, and then they go, no, that's not my truth. I'm like, keep unpacking it then mm, because it's, it's not it's what hidden. you mean. No, it's like, yeah, it's hidden. It's under there, but it's, it's a lot to compete with, right? Society has said, this is who you are. This is what you are. Mm-hmm. And so you're unpacking uh, the clothes that you were told to wear. Then you're unpacking, you're unpacking, you're unpacking. Totally. But yeah. I, I do think that the non-binary um, flow of it all is, do you know the pleasure of yourself? And when you let somebody in on that, where's your start stops? Where do you need a little more attention? Where, what are you working through? And I feel like Will's approach to um, prostate simulation as play for tops is a beautiful way to break the binary so that a holistic sexual experience can occur. Because the thing that's missing, honestly, if you, when you ask like the metaphysical people, like, Hey, What's missing for gay men or bisexual men that that are just choosing these top and bottom roles? And it's holism. How do you get to holism? You have to feel every part of yourself. You have to go to the pain, you, yeah. You have to go to your – and you and your partner have to switch roles eventually. Even if you open your relationship or not, if you guys are monogamous, eventually you guys have to switch roles. Someone You can't bottom forever. Totally. Like your anus the, – the anal canal is not built for it forever. You, you got to give yourself a break, boo. Well, also, <laughs> like, you just kind of, like, um, I think encounter different phases in life in which different parts mm. of us open up and it changes the sexual scripts that we're playing out. Like, I mm. literally, like, getting my ass eaten used to feel like I had so much misogyny around that. Like, I almost always felt, like, less than. And I was really bothered by that reaction in me. Um, and at this point, like, it's, like, one of my favorite things it actually makes me kind of feel more masculine so i've done about face on that one um wow, i used to have this kind of like that. i'm like the lady is kind of what came up in me and i was like that's well what if i was the lady <laughs> what if, like, um so i mean that's because it's vulnerable totally wow the, one of the the things i wrote on this list was that and, and we're kind of hitting on this a little bit that like top and bottom has become an identity and so people feel re- like rigidly attached to this. I am a top 
or I am a bottom rather than saying like, I want a bottom today or yeah. like I, I am bottom ass today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, I am a bottom. Um, and like, if that's something I have to check myself on a lot because you know, in my YouTube videos, whatever. And it's like a top, a bottom, a, it, like it's, like these things don't need to be nouns, right? Like they can be, mm-hmm. they can be verbs. And maybe that's um, a way that we can like kind of deconstruct some of these identities. And if we are going to be whole W H O L E people um, saying, I am a bottom is not going to be, or I am a top is not helpful. Yeah, what about, like- what, what about trauma? Like, do you think that there's guys who, um, cause I've talked to guys who top and they say, Oh, I tried it. But the person I was with, like, I didn't have a good experience. My partner hurt me or people who have like experienced abuse, um, mm-hmm. around, around butt stuff that like, that could be another reason why someone's like, ah, like this butt stuff. Like I'm not, I'm not going there. The body keeps score. Period. Mm-hmm. Like there, people don't like. We all have the family member we don't like receiving the hug from. Mm-hmm. We, the three of us, probably have very different relationships with tickling and pinching. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you're gonna add in for um, cis male anatomy that there's really only two open holes, and one you can see coming, the other you can't see coming when it occurs. So it's traumatic. It's a, it's a deep, and it's, you know, in, in, in energetic anatomy, it's the muladhara. It is the point of survival. You exist when you, once you have a tailbone, it's vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And all the associations around like letting men in, like I said, we've been ever since we hit the ground, it's like, keep people out. And mm-hmm. it's literally letting someone in your body, but also, um, ex- exhibiting or displaying your like um, not dependency is too strong of a word but want for this person to be inside of you and it's it's like turning like the opposite of what we've been told to be and express so it carries a big charge and not surprisingly like a really really um, arousing charge for so many people too because of that you know it's a, a enter into the pain yeah and and, and also like I would say the last thing on the list that I have, I'm sure there's other, there's other um, reasons why people don't top, but like some people just don't like it. <laughs> like every, totally <laughs> everybody is different. And like some guys don't like the feeling or for none of the reasons that we just described above. And I mean, I even think about myself, I do like butt stuff, but the last handful of experiences that I've had, like haven't involved butt play and they've been really fun and great and like uh even though gay porn really emphasizes like fucking getting fucked you have a whole body of pleasure and this is a part of it and so it's like if you want to explore this then this video is really helpful in giving you the tools that you need but you also have a plenty of other places to play with and have fun with and experience pleasure with Yeah, I also want to say really quick too, like a lot of people don't even want to have anal sex. You know, there are a lot of people who feel like they don't even, they have a hard time dating because, and I hear this directly fairly often, guys saying, uh, you know, people don't want to have sex with me because I don't want to fuck or I don't want to be fucked. And they feel like, well, how do I, I'm less than because that's not part of my way of expressing, you know? Yeah. All right. Any, any other things to add? I have some comments to to read if, if, you guys are going go for the comments. All right. Xavier 949 says, Davey, that was the best demonstrational instructional <laughs> have video. Him on the podcast. For what? <laughs> well, we just call Xavier 949 and have him on the podcast sometime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really. Yeah. Seriously. He always has such insightful stuff to say. Really? Uh, Will is an exceptional teacher. He teaches with care, gentleness, and a true desire that the recipient is getting the pleasure and a feeling of love and emotional support. I love not only the physical contact, but the emotional contact between the two guys. Will teaches not only technique, but an understanding of what the recipient is experiencing. This also shows tops in depth how to give uh, their bottoms the most pleasure. Following his instructions would make any top want to give bottoming a try. It is such an emotional connection between two people. I love uh, learning the things I would have never known from this video. I love you, Davey, Will, and Himros for this type of in-depth training. Videos like this is what makes Himros so unique and special for me 
as added emotional feelings, I would want the person topping me to come deep inside me. It leaves me with an added psychological feeling that I'm carrying part of my partner with me. I would agree. That's very hot. Thank you, Davey and Will so much. Also, something that we didn't say in this, which I think is worth like, since these are kind of like production meanings, um, one of the things that we've... Like, do, I, do we need to increase our rate? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, you don't. I love it. <laughs> These are production meetings. They're therapy sessions. They're they're everything. Oh, so we are increasing the rate. Increasing. <laughs> um, one of the things that, well, I mean, all we're figuring all this stuff out in real time as we create content, mm. and even things that maybe feel appropriate, like in a shoot, like that can change and evolve, and like the idea. I think if I were to do this video now, it would be Will explaining to two people how to do it. Like if he's the teacher, he wouldn't be engaged with a, um, a participant that we kind of, the boundaries that we create in these type of projects have changed over the course of the three and a half years that we've made videos. Um, and in this particular project, Will was kind of like an assistant. Um, we had a, a facilitator, Will was the assistant, but he also engaged erotically with the participants. Uh, and it worked really well for this project and people were really excited about it, but like, that's not the, like moving forward. That's not a model that we would replicate. So mm -hmm. it would look a little bit different or it would be will with one of his friends, like engaged in, you know, like this, but not in a facilitation setting. Um, so just a little, just a little footnote for this. Um, Norm Ron too says beautiful, intimate, sexy, hot, more please. You can like see that on like a, a poster, like right if we made some like billboard for your consideration. I mean, I learned um, late in life that billboards were bought. I thought only like giant corporations did them, like people combine their own billboards. Like, like to, to what? To like, like propose to their you partner? Rent, to do anything you want. You could literally, that's like you drive down the freeway and you see like, Call this lawyer. The lawyer's office paid for that billboard. Like I thought you were chosen for billboards my entire life. Come like, on. It just rent, it's rented space. I really thought like God picked you. <laughs> I want to spend a day like in your life. <laughs> in my head, you mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brian Nine says, amazingly erotic and wonderfully instructional magic. Also That's another great, billboard. It was, a, it was a great instructional video. It was very good. Totally. It's one of the best. Yeah. I I think he I think you're right though. Him not having to participate and him instructing would probably be really powerful. Yeah. Like a long, like a six video long form, like teach me how to have sex. Yeah. He is work. I mean, he has it just for fans. It's kind of like that. Teach me how to do everything. <laughs> But you, what you're specifically <clears throat> saying is like him as the instructor coaching two people how to do it. Oh my God. I, I want to see, I think he could hold my attention without people doing it. I think he could draw pictures and I would oh. still be like, Oh yeah. And also he's just like a really sweet man. Like he's, and also I'm a square. Sweet. So <laughs> because he's, he's not like those professors, the aforementioned professor professors who are really smart, but not smart enough to know how to communicate their message. Oh, yeah. to their audience. <laughs> I might be a pen. Actually I'm a pentacle. All right. Uh, all right, let's let's uh, answer an audience question. If you guys have any questions, you can email them to Davy at DavyWavy.tv, or you can call or text. People like to text us now at 612-470-5729. That's Do not text me. 612-470-5729. That's Leo Rising's direct phone number. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not. Do but not people call me. it. They call it, and then they hang up. Like, as if, like, I think they're expecting someone to answer. As if, like, I'm like... Sitting there, like, ooh, this no. is the the tip Baby line. Baby ink. <laughs> yeah, I, I help you. <laughs> How may I direct your call? <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> oh my god! When they get that. when they get the voice message, they're just like, "Oh fuck this shit!" Like, is it you on the message? Yeah, yeah, it is me. I okay, say, okay. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, hey guys, thanks. Like, leave a message and be as detailed as possible. You only get three minutes, and I think that was a little bit of a mistake because then people like talk for five minutes and then it gets cut off. But Okay. Question number one, Davy. Greetings. <laughs> this is actually a really sweet question. So wipe the smirks <laughs> off your face. <laughs> Greetings. 
Okay. <laughs> I know, earthlings. <laughs> I love <No>. it. <laughs> okay. This is a very sweet message, and it's also very sad. So anyway, this is – okay, so – Give us a second. Hold on. Okay. Adjust your emotions. We're gonna back I'm in. like, I'm like a fucking like kid at church, like not supposed to laugh. Yeah. This is this one's a roller coaster. So okay. um I think I actually sent this to you guys already. Do you have but, another one, like a buffer a question buffer. for me? Yeah, I know I've got the giggles yeah. right now. Okay, I got a I got a buffer. I got a buffer. But we have to come back to this one. So Okay, yeah. I'm okay. Into right. it. I'm into Long it. story short, um I have a friend who is bad at sex. Okay. Other mutual friends have said the same thing. He's married to a woman and they separated. I asked about their sex life and he sidestepped the conversation. I guess the implication was that maybe they separated because the sex was bad. Um, I don't want to hurt his feelings, but how do you tell someone that they are bad at sex? Isn't it, well, I don't understand though. This is like hearsay. He's never had sex with this person. No, he has had He's sex in, with this person. Oh, and yeah. then then what is bad sex? It's kind of I, like, I edited this question down because it was really long. So so he had sex with the bisexual man who's no longer married to a woman. Right. Yep. And okay. And it's this guy's theory that um, hypothesis that the reason that they separated was because the oh. sex was bad. That this like bad sex is plaguing his life. I have a good answer. Mm-hmm. Finn's got an answer. Don't assume about his past marriage. Mm-hmm. Identify what you want in particular and advocate for that. And maybe you can help, you know, ask for what you want more because saying that he, he's bad at sex doesn't like let him know or me know <laughs> um, what you need. So maybe there's some kind of like, you know, maybe he needs to learn some techniques, but it could be helpful to identify what kind of pressure, touch, all that kind of stuff that you want that's missing and then yeah. cre- create that together. There is no... Yeah, there's no like there you don't need to tell this person that they're bad at sex. Yeah, like wait, yeah. they're bad at sex with the ex wife or they're bad at sex with him. Well, with him, he knows that for sure, but he also thinks it's with the ex wife. But but there's, there's no way to know that. Yeah. Again, I'm like, yeah, what do you actually want? Because I don't really know, you know. There's something How do you that, tell someone that they're bad at sex, but you were sleeping with them while they were. But there's an assumption there that like it needs to be communicated to them that they're bad at sex, like that they need to know that knowledge. But it, isn't it, like it a to veiled get... wish for something though, isn't it? Like it sounds like a veiled kind of wish for like something for the asker. My intuition's telling me that, that he's not even that committed to this man. He just kind of wants to know the answer as so, to like. He wants to know why they broke up because it might empower him if he was the reason they broke up. But that's me being a oh, psychic. Oh, no, that is so a I'm going to back more... off a little bit. But okay. that's a plot. That one right there. <laughs> I feel like somebody like threw something at us and it's like, and now I'm like sentineling in and I'm like, well, if you, why were you fucking him if you knew he was bad at sex to begin with? Wait, I've got the oh, perfect sorry. answer. Okay. Oh. If you think, <laughs> if you want them to be better at sex, buy them a subscription to himrose.tv forward slash oh, yeah. hump. you get your little sale this month it's like $13. yeah five it's cheaper than netflix cheaper than netflix sale and you can sit down watch those videos together you can watch today's video um and if you're really invested in like helping this person along their erotic journey like you can demonstrate good sex through the sex through the way that you erotically engage yeah. with this person yeah. so through communication. yeah like have some compassion for him yeah I, like, he I is your not, sex partner. I would not advise a situation where you sit him down on the couch and say, "Honey, I just need to tell you this: you're bad at sex." Like that's well, it's just too generalized. I mean, it doesn't really say what it is. It is, is he sloppy? Subjective. Is he quiet? Is he, he said too he has hard? bad is rhythm. He... I mean, the, it was a longer email, oh, so I, well, I could. So, well, okay, so you have us like ripping someone to shreds, <laughs> oh, and you know, oh, there's I, like what an asshole. There's de- <laughs> It was a very long email. and This boy is going to call you back and use all three of those minutes, Davey. <laughs> That's what he's going to do. Okay. All right. So let's okay. go back to our greetings. Davey, okay. greetings. Uh, a year ago when everything stopped and I couldn't go to the gym, I started running regularly and started listening to your podcast every Sunday during my run. I can't say enough about how much you've all meant to me over this time. I lost my father from COVID. I went through a major job change. I watched the George Floyd uprising impact my community in St. Paul, Minnesota, and had the same frustrations and letdowns as uh, so many of your listeners. Each and every week, you were there for me and my in my earphones. I joined Himros and appreciated everything that you put into your work. They brought me comfort and beauty when I needed it. Davey, your honesty, openness, and enthusiasm make all of this possible. Finn, your insights are incredible, and your patience is amazing. Leo Rising, you bring so much truth and humanity to these conversations. You're all beautifully sexy human beings. Thank you, Sean. 
Mm-hmm. Isn't that the su- sweetest fucking it's note? Very affirming, yeah. So affirming. So affirming. Thank you, Sean. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. And also just really touched with what he's been through this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And I love that he's listening to it while running. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a closeness that, I mean, when you think of a porn podcast, you don't think about the upswing of positive um, reflections, the the aid in deconditioning a lot of really toxic things that exist in the world. Like the fact when there was, we couldn't have access to our own community. Like here you are like letting, letting our voices into your like deep subliminal. Like totally. that's beautiful. Mm. It's a gift. Mm. Yeah. And thank you, Sean, for giving us um, the gift of your attention and your time mm. and tuning in <laughs> um, and for being a Himuros TV member because it allows us to do the work that we do. All those. It's like a hug moment. It's a total hug moment. Yeah, let's end on that note because that's such a warm... Reading that is like, I don't know, it's like warm honey or something on strawberries or something. (laughs) So I love Minnesota. Mm. Um, It's like dry cold. My nose bleeds every time I'm there. there. (laughs) Well, I think that's probably like as good a place as any to, to wrap for the week. Um, next week we are going to be discussing pleasure mapping. Uh, it will be after our film shoot and we're going to have a special guest. Finn, do you remember who it is? Are we having Holly? Dr. Holly. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I love her. Yeah. So that'll be a great conversation. Yeah, she's so cool too. I think y'all might really enjoy. What's your quick like? You bring good guests. What's your your yeah your like thirty second bio on Dr. Holly? Um, so I took a somatic sex therapy class from her at MSTI, and I reached out to her because I just felt really connected to her and her message, and um, we connected and we had a lot in common. So we just I consult with her regularly. I actually like book con- consultations with her so that I can kind of like supervision talk about my clients um just get her ideas but yeah she's fucking rad and she used to be um in the fashion industry so she has like this total insight to like what women go through around beauty and stuff and mm. brings that into her trauma work she's cool lots of that sounds really powerful trauma. yeah she's cool yeah i sent her a link to the video already so she's she's gonna check that out and i don't know and watch it yeah she writes or she's also a sex tech consultant so she like writes and helps like well she can talk more about this but like and contributes to like virtual reality porn oh yeah she's really in wow. talk on stuff yeah i want to hear yeah, more oh, about that if she's willing to talk about it totally totally have you ever have you ever watched virtual reality porn i haven't you mean like with the thing on your head or like when it's an ad no like when it's the thing with the thing on your head have no. you yeah I, yeah, I did it for a YouTube video and I didn't end up uploading the video because um, it's very like, because it was a POV video. Uh-huh. So like, um, I must have shared this story before. Mm-hmm. Oh, was it, I, did you have sex with a woman in it? Yeah, I was like yeah. laying in a forest and the forest was beautiful. And then all of a sudden I look <laughs> and there's this woman on me and and she had She's this like, apple and a snake. <laughs> <laughs> no, she had these like long braids and she kept like leaning over me and her braids were like falling into my face. It was these blonde, like these long blonde braids. <laughs> and, and I was like, Oh, like, like <laughs> they gave you like Bo Derek in VR. I don't know who Bo Derek is, but I don't know. It this- it, it's a whole, it's like a whole cinematic history moment of a woman with braids. Okay. Well, it, I wasn't a white woman with braids. Yeah. I was not, I was not there for it. And and the thing she's like looking into your eyes, like that was the part that was like really discerning for me. And I, and I was like, I, I, I was really, I was trying to like look away and she wasn't reading the signals of me, like not being interested. And so, so it felt really like it was not fun. Oh my God. And my dick was so big. I like looked down. I had this like giant, giant penis that she was like riding. And I was like, so did you get hard or like, I mean, I don't understand. Were you Aroused, well, he means the he means the um the virtual reality penis. Well, yeah, yeah, but I'm just like, how much of this was overlapping your own like subjective experience? Girl, Were you it feels you- real. So like you you hear things like in 360 degrees around you, like you hear a bird fly by. But you, how like, do you feel sensation? Or you're stroking your dick though, yeah. 
No, I wasn't. I was like sitting there with the there was a uh, this woman who who like does VR porn, so she was like showing me it as an example, and I was like, because because if you're with someone and you're like giving them the signs like that you're not interested, they would be reading those signs, right, right. And she was not reading those signs <laughs> because she's a virtual reality. Like this thing was filmed with some VR like camera. And so, like, she's just riding my dick, and I'm like looking away, and she's coming in and kissing me, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, this isn't fun. <laughs> I don't like. But this. you did. So the only thing, and you don't have to answer the question, is you didn't answer Finn's initial question. So I have a different question. Do you feel as though your um, boundaries were trespassed, and that you actually? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so you would say that that the AI, the AI character. I don't know that I what? would say that. I wouldn't like. Yeah. I don't think I got like sexually assaulted they, by this AI character. It sounds like sexual assault. It's okay if it was. It it it. You, it's okay for you to say that it was. It's not okay that it happened, but it's safe space. Yeah. For you to say if the AI. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what happened, but I didn't like it. And I. I think you need to tell the. I, you need to tell the, just the the people who made this game that they they didn't catch that because it's a little on the conversion therapy tip. Well, I yeah. Oh, I think, wow. I think most people watching it like are like you, you know you get to browse through like oh this is the experience that I want to have like oh, this I like her fun. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like there this was like here put this on and I'm gonna play a video and I didn't realize how fully sensory it would feel like but yeah. here's what I don't understand did you feel stimulation on your cock or was this like psychogenic no. completely it's in your head it it was all in my head but i mean you could still in your head feel st- like it, it didn't it didn't stimulate my cock i was like okay. i was like oh take this off <laughs> okay yeah and they didn't take it off no they did eventually yeah like i, I eventually they took it off it took me a while because it was a youtube video how long filming. was the while mm, i would say a couple well it felt like a couple minutes maybe it was like a minute yeah you should really write them because the fact that you didn't post the video and like it just it's for for someone who's not um bisexual and not had like hetero like d- who gets sexual arousal out of like hetero experiences like this sounds like an attempt of con- conversion therapy and it's yeah. also like it's it's not assault but it's it definitely wasn't. yeah and, and that its wasn't. own line of like really trespass like imagine a company taking that and using that vr machine right on gay men gay gay teenage boys <laughs> or or like oh I, I there's not a world where i would be like to some straight guy here put on this vr headset like you're gonna be getting fucked by a guy in this like or you're gonna be fucking a guy like i i would have been like hey like this is a lot like you're about to see oh like do you want to see this like it was kind of just like here let me queue up a video this is a good one and and all of a sudden <laughs> all of a sudden there's this is like chick riding my giant penis in a in a forest and not and she was not responding to to my like, yeah, I don't like the fact that she wasn't responding and that the lady didn't get the signals. Who the supervisor didn't understand that you were completely not into it. Yeah, yeah. I didn't like she's in. A, I don't like that she's in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> it also took me a, a hot minute to like to to be like, wait, I don't like take this off. Anyway, so take this. Off. You know what that is? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's an original sin reference. So, yeah. what year was this? Uh. Maybe like four, four or five years ago. Oh my God. We were barely really having this conversation. You should really write them. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll see. Um, mm-hmm. Next week, we are discussing pleasure mapping with Dr. Holly. <laughs> <laughs> Finn, where can people get more of you? Um, Finndearheart.com is where. And in Leo Rising, where can people get more of you? I'll be back in two weeks. You guys can, I still am not putting a website up, so you can still find me on Emeralds. <laughs> I'm still a little hobbit. And you'll be here for Dr. Holly, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. She sounds really powerful. That yeah. sounds great. So it's two weeks for us, but only one week for the listeners, because this will come out yeah. um, per, per normal. Yeah. And, re- bow, 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 bow. and remember, you can join Hemorrhoos.tv and save 44% off our six-month membership. It's just $13.95 per month. You can himros and hump <laughs> and thump all day long. It's oh himros.tv forward slash H-U-M-P. Thanks so much for listening. And as always, more to come.